Hello and welcome to the next Nancy Drew Talk. So, these are old books. This one was also still written in 1930, which makes me question, how many books she put out in a year? <laughs> like, was, did she write this series like 10 years in advance? Because there's 64 books and they all come out like pretty rapidly. So I wonder if she had like a number of these done and then published them like three times a year. I'm just guessing. So, third book, still 1930, The Bungalow Mystery. Um, and if you've noticed the room is echoey, it's because this is our new bedroom. It echoes. <laughs> we don't have a lot of furniture in here yet. And it's under construction. So I am, we're working on the trim and I'm currently sitting inside of the bed frame. I don't have a mattress, I have a step stool. It works. So echoey, but a little bit better lighting for a basement. We have a, a smidge of sunlight that might think about coming in at some point. It's at least a little brighter of a room than our current one. And the Papa Doggo is gonna wanna come and investigate and I'm gonna have to protect my tea because tea in my favorite cup. Hi, baby. You're not gonna be able to see her, but she's adorable. Hi. Anyways, onto the book. So, as per normal, I love this series. It's a super fun classic storyline thing. And if you haven't read any of the others and you're just like randomly jumping in on number three, that's fine. Um, you don't necessarily have to go in order so far. It doesn't really matter. The moral of the story is Nancy is becoming a sleuth and is solving mysteries. Each one kind of has a different set of characters. Occasionally there's some overlap, like Helen from book two comes into book three, but there, there's not really a lot of character development, so you don't really have to worry and be like, oh, if I miss that. It's not like Harry Potter, where if you miss the first three books and you jump into book three, there's a lot of character development that you've missed and a lot of story development. That's not the case in these. And so, overall, I do love these books. Um, I love the way they're written because they don't have a lot of fluff. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very heavily dialogue based, which I like. It's, it doesn't feel like it has a lot of, like, describing the color of the curtains. It's just, so-and-so comes into the room, one sentence description of the character, and that's about it. And then you, you just kind of roll with it. If it's a distinguishing feature, like crinkly ear, which was weird, but like they'll mention that a couple times, but that's about it. It's not very heavy on heavy description and stuff. It's the dialogue that moves the story, not the descriptions galore. It's really, really dialogue based. And I like that. I didn't think I would, but I really love that about this. And so, in this one, um, it's called The Bungalow Mystery, but there's really not a lot to do with the bungalow. Uh, it's kind of at the beginning and the end, not so much anywhere in the middle. Um, but Nancy meets this girl, and she ends up having a mystery for Nancy, Nancy to solve. Pretty, pretty standard for this series. Something happens, and then, oh my god, can you solve the mystery? And Nancy Drew is always like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Um, and, yeah, so on to spoilers. So, again, this book is fun for the fact that, like, there's telegrams and a self-operating elevator, and I'm like, what? The idea of having someone operate an elevator is just madness. Um, and... Again, with breaking and entering, and it's fine. So at the very beginning, um, Nancy goes in and is like, hey, it's okay if we go into this random person's beach house thing, bungalow, whatever, which I haven't really heard of very much, but whatever. Like, it's fine. They won't mind if we like eat some of their food and like use their fire and use their blankets, it's fine. Not at all breaking and entering and super illegal. Like. I don't know, and then everyone's just kind of chill with it, and like she admits to breaking and entering, and no one bats an eye. <laughs> um, and she's constantly breaking into places, and it doesn't matter, and it's still kind of weird that it's just like, 
I don't know if it's a thing from like a hundred years ago. I feel like breaking and entering was still illegal. Um, but like if you had good cause, even if you were the police, like it's just, it's kind of weird how much she's just like going into random places and how easy it is for her to get into these places. Um, and not getting in trouble for it at all. Um, like she broke into the what's her faces houses um, through their window and not a problem. <laughs> Not at all. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's kind of weird about that, but I still like these. They're kind of cheesy, but I kind of like going into a book knowing how it's gonna end, and the joy of it is seeing how it happens. Because you know at the end of every single Nancy Drew book, she's gonna win. Every single time. Without fail. She's gonna, she'll solve the mystery. Um, but it's sort of how, and how it's gonna connect to whatever her father's working on, because it seems to always connect. And it's just fun to see it come together in a variety of ways. And like the first couple of books have done this, and I know eventually we do get um, some characters that become kind of main characters, but yeah, I like it. I like that these, you know, you know what's gonna happen. You just don't know when it's going to happen. So anyways, that is kind of all of my thoughts really for this third book. Um, the fourth one is The Mystery at Lilac Inn. I'm excited to start on that. And yeah, these books are super fun. If you are kind of in a writing slump, these are really great to give you an idea of a different way to write. Um, because, like, so much detail is just done instantly. Like, for example, randomly flipping to page 102, after eating, Nancy put on her bathrobe, or her ba bathing suit, if I could read. <laughs> she put on her bathing suit and wandered down to the beach. A boy in attendance gave her a towel, and Nancy stretched out on the sand, unaware of a steadfast glance of a couple hidden behind a large green and white striped umbrella not far away. They nodded to each other, then when Nancy was not looking, they quickly left the beach. Like... That was a lot of things that was summed up in one paragraph. Like, she's changing into a swimming suit, she goes to a beach, there's a guy that gives her a towel, then there's a creepy stalker couple that's watching her, and then they leave, and she's unaware. Um, and it also kind of sets like this tone that like, you're not reading it from her point of view all the time. Like you get that other, like you know more than the character and you're just like, oh no! Um, so it builds more suspense because the character doesn't know what's going to happen, but you kind of have an idea now and you're like, oh no, no, no. So I do like that about these books. Again, these are almost 100 years old. These are 90 years old and they are fantastic to read. So if you've watched through the spoiler section because you didn't really care because it's like an old book and not a lot of people talk about them. Apparently there was a book or a movie that came out like last year about the second book. Didn't know that. I got bored this morning and I was like, is anyone else like even talking about these books? Because I feel like not. I feel like this is just like a random series no one's talking about. Um, and then there was apparently a movie that came out like last year for the second book, Nancy Drew and the Hidden Staircase. And I was like, oh, whoops. So I'm going to have to watch that. Um, I think it has the main character, Beverly, as a kid from It. And yeah. Also, I think maybe we'll read that towards Halloween time. I want to get a lot more halloween -y books um, read this year. So this one is done, though. And again, we will be checking in in the next couple of days with the fourth book. These don't take long to read. Like, I read this in about a day. Um, I had read, like, maybe 10 pages the day before. And then I had about an hour and a half. And... I basically finished the book. I came home and read for like maybe another 15 minutes and had it done. So they go by really fast. So if you just need kind of a really casual read, these are fantastic. But yeah, so I am going to go start on the fourth book and all that jazz, drink some tea. And well, I might do another video this morning. You might have more of this echoey background. We'll see. But anyways, and it's gonna be super nice and awkward because I have to like lean all the way towards you because I can't edit. Though I am, I have money now. I'm gonna go and get a laptop charger so I can at least do that. So we'll have some 
return to quality a little bit in the near future. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching and blessed be.